she passed away in 2010, in June. And actually, her birthday is also in June. And um, <clears throat> shortly after she died, as I think happens, you've got the sort of picture of the person just after they died. You think of them as the sick person they were right before they, they passed away, if they are in fact sick before they die. And then somewhere a few weeks along, that gave way to my thinking of her, imagining her as a child. Just she took, told so many stories about her own childhood that I was able to see her. That that kind of that was the picture that replaced the picture of her in those final weeks. And so this is that that poem is, is this. It's called All Afternoon. Grief wants her lean and pink, taking the sidewalk in warm sandals and a summer dress. Her tenth June is a hard plum's shine. The sun is cotton. Here's honey in the light and a car horn two blocks behind that has no grip on her body, loafing under the poplars. Grief says, just now, let her be lonely. It will make the next part sweeter and puts her sisters ahead on the curb, the skin on their knees shining like a wedding. Let her laugh with them, spin down to the grass. She can kick her feet high and swing a shoulder through the smallest girl's hair, then rise up still laughing. Grief needs a red brick house on the corner for her to enter. Grief will build it. And a mother in the kitchen bent over some steam lifting. It's time for her to touch her mother's arm, walk past her to the rose red chair with the book in it. It's time to sit and let her face climb the words like a pulse. She has all afternoon. Grief wants her back to the window as the light moves, which it will. What happens next? I didn't know her then. I wasn't even born. Grief won't know her now on the couch at 70, curled and mottled in a pale nightgown. Grief won't know her name. Take her like this instead. Twill pinafore, book in the lap, sprawling back into dark roses, summer's arms. <laughs> <laughs> and they associated it, they said, with the, the so-called satanic pagan indigenous practices, right? Those, those evil natives were using these flowers to, and I don't know. But reading this, I just couldn't help but root for the zinnia all the more. <laughs> right? Those guys are. So this poem is called Zinnia. I've lost my shoe. Zinnia. What sad chance to be mal de ojos, the Spaniard's evil eye, the ugly luck asters flapping sour lashes across an ocean of thin wings. But to me, you are still in fluorescence, the bitter walls of summer in a girl's small body, rocket of sepals and petals launched like a girl's bright leg pumping up the hill over her mother's ghost garden. You are her left hand rising to tear the heavy sky, her hair knotted and trembling in late light. You are the anatomy of her eye, ringed prairie of zinnias, constricting and flecked with what's coming, dark filaments of storm. Favor her with your chaos. Bring on your forked reds spattered on the flags, sharp tongues of song that scare the matadors. Bring on your thousand cleft chins tipping to gray sun and your body spiked and growling to withstand this garden. Bring on the binding curse the word zinnia in her mother's mouth, in flight across a season of monarchs, a sea of sour stars. 